Hey everybody! I'm sure a lot of you gardeners know that herbs and vegetables require a lot of nitrogen in the soil to grow delicious, nutritious food. And did you know that about 78% of the air around us is nitrogen? Unfortunately, it's in a gas form and the plants can't use it. But wouldn't it be great if we could take the atmospheric nitrogen and have it available to the plants? And furthermore, wouldn't it be even better if we could take that nitrogen from the plants and have it spread throughout your soil? Well, if that's the case, and you'd be interested in that, then this video is for you, because I am going to show you how. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, Alan Schaefer at Custom Garden Solutions. In today's exciting episode, we're going to talk to you about a process called nitrogen fixing. And nitrogen fixing isn't new. But I talk to a lot of gardeners who don't know a whole lot about it. And certainly it isn't covered a real lot here on YouTube. So today we're going to put an end to that. So let's get started. Let me explain what nitrogen fixing means. As I mentioned, the atmospheric nitrogen that's around us is in a gas form and the plants can't use it in a gas form. But if rhizobium, big word of the day, rhizobium bacteria, is available in the soil or present in the soil or becomes present in the soil by adding a rhizobium bacteria inoculate, kind of like we're going to do today to our peas and beans, then nitrogen fixing can happen. Not all plants are nitrogen fixers. Some of the more common ones are beans and peas and lentils and clover and there's several others. But since we're going to be planting some beans and peas for our next episode, that'll be the focus of today's conversation. Here's a couple images that might help. The rhizobium bacteria in certain plants, like beans and peas, have a symbiotic relationship. Here's how it works. Rhizobium bacteria enters the plant roots from the soil via root hairs. These bacteria colonize the roots of our legumes and form root nodules. They look kind of like bumps on the roots formed from the rhizobium. From their home in the nodules, they take nitrogen from the air and convert it into ammonium. That's a form of nitrogen that plants can use. The plants, in return, feed the rhizobium bacteria carbohydrates. So basically, the plants get nitrogen from the rhizobium bacteria, and in return, they provide the rhizobium bacteria carbohydrates. This image of the nitrogen life cycle shows the symbiotic or mutually beneficial relationship with the plant providing carbohydrates obtained from photosynthesis to the rhizobium and ex in exchange for these carbon sources, the rhizobium provides fixed nitrogen to the host plant. So the bottom line is nitrogen fixing allows beans and peas, in our example, to take the nitrogen gas from the air and make it available to the plants. More nitrogen healthier plants. But on top of that, the nitrogen that isn't used by those plants is made available to the soil and to the other plants in the surrounding area, such as peppers or tomatoes, for instance. Even though those peppers or tomatoes aren't nitrogen-fixing plants. So nitrogen-fixing is a great way to grow beans and peas and other nitrogen fixing plants at the same time enriching your soil with nitrogen. What a great deal. You are probably asking how do you get rhizobium bacteria into your plants? Well if it's available in your soil you don't have to do anything. In our case we're going to use a rhizobium bacteria inoculate and we're going to add it to our seeds so let me show you how we do that. How do you get the rhizobium onto the seeds? First, take a bowl or a plate, and in this instance, I'm just going to add a couple seeds because I don't have time to plant these today, and put them in your bowl. Then you just need a little bit of inoculant, and if I were to do the whole pack of seed, I might put a teaspoon in, but I literally am only going to put a little dash of inoculant in because I only got a few seeds there. And 
Then add some rainwater if you have it, because you don't want the chlorine or chloramine to kill any of the bacteria if you can help it. Otherwise, just use tap water. I like to form what's called a slurry to kind of a, a mushy consistency. For beans and peas, let this sit for about an hour. You can do this for several hours if you'd like, but I find too much time and the seeds may become too fragile and your seeds may break or crack. After 24 hours, the bacteria loses its effect in this. So I just stick with an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And to improve the shelf life of your inoculate, just keep it in a cool, dry place. I'll put a link to the rhizobium bacteria inoculant in the description down below, and you can pick that up at Amazon. Recently, I heard somebody suggest that you shouldn't allow your bean plants or your pea plants to fruit if you want to nitrogen fix your soil. In other words, they were suggesting that you shouldn't let your bean plants grow beans and your pea plants grow peas if you want to nitrogen fix your soil. And in my experience, with all due respect, <laughs> I don't think this is 100% accurate. Um, last year, right where I stand, I had bee plants, bean plants growing. And right behind me, I had pea plants growing. And alongside of them very closely, I had a long row of sweet peppers. And I also had sweet peppers growing in rows farther and farther away from the bean plants and the pea plants. What I noticed towards the end of the season is that the sweet pepper plants closest to the beans and the peas were about 50% larger and yield about 50% more sweet peppers. And I had let the bean plants produce beans and the pea plants produce peas. Now what I might suggest, if you want to maximize the amount of nitrogen fixation of your soil, that maybe then you don't allow your bean plants to grow peas and your pea plants to grow peas. In other words, don't let them fruit. Let them grow to the point right before they do that. And then you do something called chopping and dropping. So chopping and dropping is just cutting the plant down at soil level and letting the root system with all that good nitrogen just decompose into your soil and taking the top half of the plant above the soil and just dropping that onto the surface of your soil. Now, you could also de compost that material or I'm a no-till gardener and that's a method I believe in and we'll talk about that more in future episodes but if if you don't mind tilling you could also till that uh, plant material right into your soil and that's something that they call green manure so the roots underneath and the top part of the plant that you cut is just called green manure because it goes back into your soil as nitrogen <laughs> make sure to check out the upcoming episodes I'll be planting peas and beans. In addition, I'll be doing a episode on a homemade trellis that I think you'll find very interesting. It's very cheap, easy to make, and it works great. You can check them out behind me. And I'll also be doing an episode on how to keep the heat pressure down from your beans and your pea plants by using shading and placement. I'm Alan Schaefer at Custom Garden Solutions. Our channel's all about helping you grow herbs and vegetables and all kinds of cool garden stuff. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn all about growing herbs and vegetables and all kinds of cool garden stuff, start today by subscribing right there and then hit the notification bell so that you're notified whenever we provide a new episode so you don't miss anything because you never know where I'm going to show up next. And due to popular demand, here it is your favorite, the pepper.